when I when I arrived, I saw him standing on the railing. Um, I I approach slowly and in such a way so that that there's no surprise that I'm there, um, and uh, to that end, I I verbalize to him soon and from a distance and slowly approach so that, that the person is able to set parameters as far as how close they will allow me to be because that tends to be quite a big issue with folks. Most people when they get to that point have, have been going through a lot of trauma in their life. Um, they may have a number of issues that they are uh, trying to address that are negative. Maybe they have um, uh, criminal histories, maybe they have lost family members or loved ones, um, and oftentimes these things group together and they become overwhelming. Uh, and, and, and we as human beings, at least in our society, are very bad at talking about those things and, and relieving the pressure that that creates. So it becomes very overwhelming for people and they get they get to the point where they cannot see beyond them and they can't see themselves having a future beyond them. They think that life is hopeless, uh, which is a, a huge tragedy. And, and then they start to believe that this is the only way out for them, uh, which is wrong in most cases. This lasted about an hour. I guess, how do you maintain your attention span and focus on the person and yet still somehow uh, have, I guess, a strategy to, to talk them down off of this situation? Well, the more of these things that you do, the more experience you have, um, as with anything, I think um, the more some of the bits of it become so familiar that you don't need to um, work as hard on them. Um, but it's something that takes total concentration and it takes um, putting a piece of your emotional self into it. It's, it's a very taxing thing to do. Um, it's emotionally taxing and it's uh, intellectually taxing because you have to constantly watch the person, um, watch what their reactions are, listen to their responses if they're giving them, um, and attempt to read what it is they're saying to you uh, verbally and non-verbally, and to connect to the place within, within them that will bring about a positive resolution. When, when I'm in that situation, while I can be aware that there might be things going on behind me, um, I don't really know what is going on behind me. I don't know what's going on on the radio, even though it's talking at times. Um, I'm very, very focused on that person um, with almost a tunnel vision. Was there a point yesterday when you realized I've succeeded, or does he, the person you just suddenly decide, okay, I'm coming down? Um, when he was safely in my car, <laughs> I took a, I released a sigh of relief. Um, until that moment, nothing is really for sure in any way, shape, or form, and I, I've had the experience of losing someone. Um, it's um, it's it's difficult. It's it's a very difficult thing to go through to lose someone uh, in that situation. Um, you know, suicide is thought of by people as a solitary event that only affects the person that that does it, which is such a fallacy. It it. it Anyone who was in the area, uh, I have dealt with witnesses downtown uh, from people who have jumped off of, of buildings. 
Um, and, and those witnesses were so tremendously traumatized that uh, we spent a long time with them, uh, getting them through that initial process. It is not different for, our, for officers, for um, mental health care professionals, for uh, medical, emergency medical personnel, uh, any of the folks who are out there, uh, the, the guys who are down on the river patrol boats in the river, it is the same thing. Uh, everyone has an emotional buy-in to this situation. As human beings, we can't help but do that. And as a result of that, everyone is going to feel the results of how this comes out. Um, if, if the person jumps and dies, their feelings are over. But all the people they leave behind, including the strangers that just happen to be driving by, will be left with a lot of baggage to deal with after that. Who takes care of the police officer? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's interesting since since I started uh, this work. Um, I think that our bureau has actually been a leader nationally in 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 helping officers deal with things. Um, I think our bureau has a very long way to go before um, I would say that officers are taken care of in the way that they really deserve to and need to be taken care of. Um, it, it, it's similar, while different, to um, our combat troops coming back from Iraq. Um, on a daily basis you see many, many, many awful things. Theirs is magnified tremendously from what we do. The difference is that ours goes on for years and years and years. Um, and it's a very difficult question, how do you go about dealing with that? Um, officers are much more willing to talk about that sort of thing now than when I started. Um, it is much more of a topic of conversation. Um, there, there are many more people willing to ask, how are you doing? And, and in fact, one of the sergeants that was there yesterday came up to me afterwards and asked me that question. Do you need a, do you need a few minutes? Uh, there are a lot of procedures that we, that we do go through in terms of traumatic incidents. Um, but as I say, I think we have a long way to go before um, we really get to where we are. It is still um, pursuing on myself, really, to take care of myself, uh, which becomes very hard in these situations. Um, just as the folks who ended up on the bridge didn't get the kind of help that they needed prior to being there, as human beings, we are all constantly going through those situations in life. In this business, we go through it more often and at a little bit higher pitch than most individuals.